Level 13, noise. Yes, the monstrous edifice that is analog tape recording has a 13th floor, and it's where bad things happen. Analog tape recorders are noisy, damned noisy. At the risk of getting my YouTube self-certification blown, bloody noisy. You can expect to get a signal to noise ratio of maybe 65 decibels from the best quarter inch stereo or two inch 16 track machines. A couple of dB less on a 24 track machine because the tape width is the same and the tracks are narrower. You can hear the noise. Try to record something with dynamics like classical music and you will definitely hear the noise in the quiet bits. We call it tape hiss because it's subjectively worse in the high frequencies. Oh yes, and there's another kind of noise that's worse. Modulation noise. That's a noise that comes and goes according to the level of the signal. The constant background of tape hiss is something you can get used to, but noise that varies in level attracts the ear much more annoyingly. To be fair, it only shows up on some signals. It's worst, as I've been told because it's an instrument I've never recorded on tape, with the penny whistle. Who'd have thought it? Level 14, NAB versus IEC. The signal that comes out of the playback head does not have a flat frequency response. In fact, it's way out, way, way out. The issue is that the output level of the head is proportional to frequency. So the level rises six decibels for every doubling of frequency. Or I'd probably rather say that it drops six decibels for every halving of frequency. Not the end of the world. This can be fixed easily with a little bit of EQ inside the machine. Actually, a lot of EQ. But the slope is very gentle at just six decibels per octave. One immediate problem is that boosting the bass boosts any hum picked up from the stray magnetic fields caused by mains electricity. But a head shield will fix this adequately. Just make sure to use it if it doesn't flip up automatically, depending on the machine. Another is that Americans and Europeans had slightly different ideas on what the time constants should be. Time constants. Wikipedia will be your guide. The upshot is, though, that a tape recorded on an NAB machine, NAB for National Association of Broadcasters in the USA, won't have the correct frequency response when played on an IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission, machine, and vice versa. It's a small difference, however. It's important to use the right machine for important projects, but otherwise, a bit of EQ is a practical solution. And to be honest, a lot of people don't know, and many that do know, don't care. Level 15, noise reduction. Analog tape is noisy, so we need noise reduction, right? Modern noise reduction is a single-ended process and works on any source material. There may be a bit of audio mangling going on, so it's best not to record noise in the first place. <laughs> but hey. Noise reduction for analog tape works by compressing the signal on record, so it's at a higher level than the noise, then expanding it back on playback. The noise is expanded down into inaudibility. The various Dolby systems work well. DBX is and creates the worst modulation noise you've ever heard. But Dolby is good as long as it's aligned properly. It's really easy to do once the recorder and Dolby unit have been set up by someone who knows what they're doing. At some point before or after the session, you record a Dolby tone on the tape and splice it in at the head of the reel. It's as simple as pressing a button. Then on playback, you check that the tone comes back at the right level. It will, of course, in your own studio if everything's aligned properly, but it might not in some other studio. But with the Dolby tone, it's easy to check and adjust. So how come so many times so many people got it so wrong? If the Dolby unit isn't aligned properly, the recording will sound compressed or expanded compared to having exactly the correct dynamic range that it should. Level 16, print through. With a magnet, you can magnetize any magnetizable material, like tape. That's how it works. The record head is an electromagnet that magnetizes the tape. So. If the tape is magnetized, the tape itself is a magnet, and it can magnetize any magnetizable material, like tape. Yes, tape can magnetize itself. One turn of the tape on the reel can magnetize the adjacent turns. We call this print through, and it sounds like an echo, and a pre-echo because it works on both the next turn and the turn before on the reel. Legend has it that if you store the tape tail out, the print through will be less noticeable. This is because the pre-echo and the post-echo are at different levels. And if the post-echo is louder, which it will be if the tape is stored tail out, it'll sound like an echo mixed in with the reverb. I'm simplifying that, but I'm sure the internet can offer more detail if you need it.